All right, it's been six months since the Nintendo Switch OLED was released. It came out on the 8th, I think, of November, so we're a little bit late. At the time of this filming, I think it's about a week or so after that. But even six months later, I still get the same questions every single day, whether it's from people on YouTube in comments or even my friends still ask me now, is it worth it to pay the extra $50 for the OLED or just get the regular Switch or a light? I figured being the six month anniversary, I guess, of the Switch, we should go ahead and do another update review to see exactly what I think about this thing after a full six months of use. But before we get started in this video, I do want to make sure I tell you guys about the giveaway that we're doing over on my Twitch. The link is down below. We give a brand new Switch game away every single month. This month, it's happening this week. Hopefully, I get this video out before it actually happens. But like I said, the link is down in the description. If you want to enter to win that free Switch game for this month or even you know, next month or the month after that, just make sure you follow me over there. Like I said, the link is down below. All right, very quick overview, because I know some of you guys out there watching this video are probably new here. If you are, make sure you subscribe, but you probably are wondering maybe what the difference is between the Switch OLED and the regular Nintendo Switch. Now, we're not gonna be talking about the light in this video. I have a video that goes over all three that I'll link at the end of this video. Right now, we're just gonna compare the other two just so you get a general idea of, of the differences. So both the Switch and the Switch OLED can do docked mode. It comes with a dock. The dock that comes with the OLED actually does have a LAN port in the dock. The other one does not. The old style does not have that. So the only difference, I mean, they look a little bit different slightly. They're basically the same. You know, the old Switch works with the new dock. The new Switch works with the old dock. Everything works the same. The new one just got the LAN port on it. And I got to be honest, when it comes to the dock, since we're since we're on the subject, I don't even actually use my dock. My OLED dock, it's, it's in my bedroom upstairs, but that's the place that I play my Switch the least in TV mode. Usually when I'm playing upstairs in bed, I'm just playing handheld mode. I have the Skull & Co dock here, the small one. I've got my Monster Hunter dock at the other TV. I've got the Animal Crossing dock at the TV in the living room. So I really haven't had a place to hook up my new white dock that came with my OLED, but it's, you know, it's fine. It's the same as the other there's nothing really special about it. If you need that LAN port, it's there. I don't use it. That's why I really haven't bothered hooking it up. I don't see it as a big priority to be hooked directly into the internet with the Switch. I've never really had a problem. I've actually tried it with the cloud versions of games and it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So I haven't really worried about it. But as far as the docks go, the slight difference in the look is, is minimal. The only thing that the difference is really is that LAN port. If you need it, you need it if you don't, whatever. So you've got a slight weight difference with this one in the, the old version of the Switch, which is not really much. It's 0.93 pounds uh, versus 0.88 pounds with the old Switch. Not that big of a difference. Not something I've really noticed with this one moving from the old one to this one. Hasn't really affected anything. Now, something that might help you out a little bit, this still, it's not enough. When it comes to storage for video games and things like that, it's not enough. But this one does have 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. The old ones only have 32. So if you're just getting a switch for the first time, maybe if you don't have a memory card yet, you know, you're going to you're going to be able to get away with it a little bit longer, but still you're going to need to get a micro SD card. You basically have to have one if you're going to have any digital game. So the 64 gigs helps a little bit. But again, I, I have a one terabyte SD card. I actually I went all digital. I have a video I just put out about that last week. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure you go check that out. But as far as the comparison go, really, the only thing else to really compare, I think, is besides the screen itself, which we'll get to is the battery life and it's exactly the same 4.5 to 9 hours is what their website says and that's about true i don't really notice any difference in battery with the oled some people say that it lasts longer it might the oled panel might be a little bit more efficient than the other one was but it's basically the same as far as battery life goes so i wouldn't expect anything huge from this one to the old one as far as playtime. Now, as far as the, the other little things on the Switch here, before we get to the screen, obviously, that's what we're going to get to. That's the big thing. We're going to get there. A lot of people were having problems with the game cartridge slot, which I, I don't really understand. I know they took a little bit, a little bit more out of, of the area where you opened it, but I don't see a problem with this at all. I don't know why people were so upset about it. I haven't really had any problems opening or closing it. Then again, I don't really use it because I've gone all digital, but I mean, I mean, you could just open it. It's not it's really not that hard at all. I don't know. That hasn't been really a problem for me. One thing I kind of don't like, uh, after after a while of using this thing, I, I kind of don't like the edges, uh, the bezel of the front because it's it's kind of, if you can see here, it's it's glossy. So it does collect a lot of fingerprints. You can kind of see them, you know, if, you, if your finger slides off the Y button or off the joystick and you start touching around the edges, you do get a lot of fingerprints. And I mean, 
it's a touch screen, so that's gonna happen anyway, but I do really wish that that bezel was matte. The back, the top, and the bottom are all matte, and I think it looks a whole lot better that way, so I wish they kind of would have went with that on the front, but that's not a huge deal. Definitely not a deal breaker, especially when you're talking about this screen and what's going on with this, which again, we will get to, but before we do that, I want to talk about one other thing, and I think this is probably besides the screen. This is easily the biggest update of this thing and something that I use so much more than I thought, but it's the kickstand. This new kickstand, it's fantastic. It, it still works six months later. And like I said, I use this thing all the time. I use it not actually to play in tabletop mode, but when I set my switch down on a table, it's always with the kickstand open. I have it like that all the time. I never lay my switch down really almost ever. And now that I'm using the Neo grip with the smaller grips, uh, it, you can still use the kickstand just like it's intended. You can kind of use it with the bigger grips on. Doesn't work as well but with this it works perfect and I do have to say I was a little worried about it wearing out I was worried about it you know getting flimsy like the other one did I mean the other one completely broke off I don't I don't know how many people actually have a, a working kickstand on their old switch still but I, I bet it's I bet the numbers very small because they break very easily as soon as you open it one time they're basically on the road to death at that point but this one it has not worn out it still holds very very well I love the design of the kickstand I use it like I said all the time and it's something I never used on my old one I literally never used my kickstand one because you know it seemed like it was breaking every time I touched it so I tried to stay away from it but two it just didn't really work that well it didn't work well at all it didn't hold the switch up really by itself unless you set it down very slowly and were very careful with it the thing fell over anyway this I've never had a problem with it falling over I've never had a problem with it sliding out or losing you know any of the the tension on the kickstand itself it works great they've really perfected the kickstand uh this time i hope they keep this design going forward with whatever they do for the switch pro or switch 2 or whatever it is i'd love to see them put something like this on a switch light though a kickstand on a switch light especially since you know you, you don't really have the option to play in tv mode a kickstand for, for tabletop mode for a switch light i think would be something really cool so if we see that uh that OLED switch light maybe this year hopefully we see a kickstand on that but let's go ahead and talk about this screen and obviously that's the big thing when you're looking at getting a switch for $300 or a switch OLED for $350 a lot of people are asking is it actually worth the $50 just for that screen so we've talked a little bit about it, the other stuff that comes with this the way you know that they're justifying the $50 I think this is worth $50 the entire package 50 more dollars just the screen alone I think is worth the $50 upgrade maybe not in actual money how much it costs but I think for the end product and what you're getting with this compared to the regular switch I think it's 100% worth the extra $50 this screen it's just beautiful it looks so good and again it's really hard to show you what they look like compared to the old ones but it really is night and day difference the blacks are black the colors are brighter everything about it just looks it just looks amazing so not only does this screen look a ton better I mean it looks so much better than the old one especially when you go to this one and then go back like my kids have a switch light going from this to the switch light is a, a very very big difference at this point going from this to a regular switch going back it's a big difference it's really hard to go back to one of those screens after after using this but while my experience with this has been great I have not had any problems with my screen whatsoever I haven't had any problems with the switch at all I know there have been some issues with some of the OLED panels my friend Tyson I think he's making a video about this I'm gonna go ahead and link his stuff down below he also uh, is starting his YouTube up he's got some good stuff over there make sure you check him out but he has actually been through several switch OLEDs because he's getting a very weird uh, it's like a green tint on his screen I don't know exactly how to explain it he sent me some pictures I'll go ahead and pop those up here so you can see it but I'm pretty sure he's gonna be doing some in-depth videos on what he's done because he's had to send these back to Nintendo and they keep sending him more back it's a whole thing obviously he can explain that to you but make sure you guys check him out that clearly is an issue you for some people he's the only person that I know personally that's had that happen but he's had a few of them it is a very strange thing so I don't know if it's a, if it's a widespread thing because like I said he's the only person I know who's had it but it is something you may want to look out for other than that issue I think if you're looking to buy a Nintendo switch right now or upgrade from your old one I think it's worth it I really do even if you had an old Nintendo switch now I really do honestly think the upgrade if you can you know if you can get some money out of your old switch and, and you have the money to get a new one if it's not breaking the bank yeah I think getting this switch is is the way to go I also think that in this case now that we've seen breath of the wild delayed into 2023 
I think if we were going to get a Switch Pro or anything upgraded, I, I think that's probably going to be close to the time. So even if you get this one now, you've got a whole year to enjoy it before you have to worry about doing that. Which is, you know, we buy cell phones every year. What's the big deal? I don't know why everybody complains about that. It's really not that big of a deal. Sell it. Get a new one. It's all good. Anyway, guys, I hope that helped. I do believe that the Switch OLED is worth the money. If you guys have any other questions, please put them down in the comments section below. Like I said, I'm going to link to my all digital video right here. And I'm going to link to whatever video I talked about earlier. I can't even remember what it is, but it's right here. So if you want to watch either of those, here they are, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a like. Make sure you are subscribed. We'll see you in the next one.